surprised that anyone would even want to come and hear and listen to this, but I will be sharing a lot of new information to some people, and some people have heard me say this stuff over and over again, so it's always fun to hear it again, and I know that, because I will be sharing a few new things that I have incorporated in um, what I'm going to be talking about today. I want everyone to know that if you're here, it is by right of consciousness, meaning that you have consciously vibrating high enough that you can come in here and you really want to hear what I have to share. So that's always good to know. Also, before we start, I'm going to calibrate and we're going to see what this room is calibrating at because after I do my talk, I will calibrate again and we will see if we have raised our vibration because that's what we're supposed to do. Oh, I'm supposed to be doing this for you all. Okay. Okay, on a scale of, of 100 to 1,000, 1,000 being the highest that we can go, that's the avatars, Jesus, Buddha, Krishna. Um, okay, let's see where we are. This is the group energy here, our vibration. It's all energy. We're at 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. By 10, we're at a little over 500, which is exactly where we want to be because 500 is the love number. And if you look on the scale, you'll see uh, love is at 500. And we want to be at love or above in our vibration. And one thing that we all want to do is everyone says, okay, how can I get into a higher calibration? How can I get into a, you know, where I can get up? really high and because every time we do get into a higher calibration every time we do vibrate higher we actually lift the whole planet up um, I'm not going to talk much more about that right now but I just want you to know that we will I'll be showing you all how to calibrate because it's really important because you're really calibrating everything you know but anything that has energy I'm getting a little feedback here um, Anything that has energy can be calibrated. Anything. That cup of coffee. That bottle of water. So, um, if it's, we'll talk about all the great things that can be uh, looked at today. Okay, first of all, I want to explain what got me into the, this line of uh, work. And of course, it was with health problems. Years ago, I was, um, no, I was living in LA and I got really sick. I mean, like all over my body sick. I had arthritis and I'm like, I'm too young. This is for old people. But I was so sick. I could hardly open a doorknob. Everything hurt. My tips of my toes to the top of my head. And um, I was very blessed. I did have a miracle healing and um, I moved back from LA to Tennessee where I was, um, I promised God if he would heal me because I went, for two years I lost my health. And if you ever lose your health, you've lost everything. You can't do anything. And I didn't know if I would ever get it back. I thought, am I going to be hurting like this for the rest of my life? And can I live, you know, this life, you know, and be in this much pain? Um, and that was back when the doctors didn't really have, they'd come out with Motrin, but I couldn't take that because it gave me, uh, hurt my stomach. So I started going to health food stores and um, learning everything I could about diet, nutrition, and you know how I could detoxify my body. This is back in the early 80s. There wasn't a lot of information. Thank God I was in L.A. and not in Memphis, Tennessee, where there was maybe one little teeny health food store there. But anyway, I got uh, I got healed, and um, so I moved it back tennessee like i promised i would because i wanted to help people like me who gotten themselves really messed up and didn't know how to get out of this situation but i started feeling bad again after and i was running out of these herbs i was taking chinese herbs and i was running out of the herbs and i wanted to get some more so i went back to la <laughs> the guy the doctor had moved the chinese doctor so i couldn't get any more so i went back home and was introduced to a wonderful chiropractor, Dr. Morgan, who did save my life. And when I first went in to see him, he started muscle testing me. And I knew about muscle testing because I had studied kinesiology years before when I studied shiatsu in L.A. And um, so I had, was 
was really aware of everything he was doing, but it was so wonderful to just, I mean, before he even adjusted me, he was telling me everything's out, he's got ribs out, he's got this out, that organ's weak, you know, this organ, you know, cal uh, uh, all your organs, every organ in our body calibrates to a certain number. And most of them calibrate to 10. Our heart calibrates 12, our brain is 15, but everything else is 10. So he was going through my body and calibrating everything and telling me, you know, what I was wrong. And then he would bring out a, a bottle of herbs and he'd say, hold these. And my arm would go weak. Okay, we're going to put something else. We'll try this. Until he found what I needed to balance my body. Of course, I walked out of there with my arm full of, <laughs> of pills. 90 a day I took for three months. But in three months, I had my health back. I had no pain in my body. All my systems were back up to 100%. I was like made new inside. And I wanted to go around and around and tell everybody this. See, the doctor that I was seeing before I saw Dr. Morgan, I mean, you know, well, their prognosis is, well, you have lupus, Pam, you know, and I mean, I mean, that's it. Lupus, that's a real scary thing to have. And, you know, I tried talking to other people that I knew had lupus, but they were not ready to hear what I was sharing. So they, you know, poo-pooed it and everything. And I'm saying, hey, I know you can heal this. But anyway, so I, um, I still was having a lot of digestive problems. And I moved out of Memphis and moved uh, up to a little town called Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And a um, beautiful little city, but far away from my, my doctor. So whenever I could, I'd go back in, and he'd put me on more supplements. And he said, Pam, I'm, I've learned this new way to muscle test. And see, I told him, I said, I, I've never been good at muscle testing. Because every time I'd try to muscle test, somebody, their arm wouldn't go down or up or whatever. And very rarely are people testable. But I was learning why. But anyway, he said, I'm going to teach you how to do this form of muscle testing so you can test yourself. And he said, you need to test all your food. Because they said it's your food that is, is, is bothering your stomach. Well, I knew that, but what do I eat? Because I was getting where I couldn't eat anything. And um, so I would call him up and I'm saying, it's not working. I can't get nothing. I can't get the, the, you know, my fingers to work. And he said, you're not practicing enough. Do it more. But I was so desperate and I felt so bad. I said, okay, I will. So I would go into restaurants and I'd sit down and I'd, the menu and I'd go through it and see if I could get my finger to move up and down and it finally did but it took time but I have found that if someone will work with me that really wants to learn this in three days I can teach you how to do it you can pick it up but you've got to practice it the what we're doing is when we muscle test if we're working with our subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is just a muscle and all you have to do is you you keep working it till the subconscious mind goes, oh, okay, so we're going to muscle test. All right, so that's what she's wanting to do. So that's what I'm going to do today. That'll be more toward the end of it. I'm going to let everybody get their fingers going so you, I can show you exactly what to do. Um, but then, like I said, it took me about three months to learn this. Dr. Morton said it took me about a year to learn it because he just he wasn't practicing. and he, But he knew that if he had it, he could have got it a lot faster. But once you do start doing this, this is the key now. You have to trust it. You have to believe, okay, I asked and I got this answer. I ask and I want, you know, this question. And and sometimes you'll ask and your finger will do this number and you go, okay, I know I'm not getting it clear. So you stop and you just let it go and then you go back and you can ask again. And you keep asking until you'll know. And the way I would do, I would set things out on the table. Once I said, okay, I'm going to really see if this works. And I put Clorox out there and I put um, Comet and different things I knew. And food, you know, I put food around. Food, some food I knew I could eat, some I couldn't. And and then I would just start pointing. Of course, anything that was poison, I'm, th I'm saying, okay, this is good for me to eat, you know. And, you, I mean, that way you can really test stuff. Say, okay, you know that you're getting a correct answer. Because, um, and then I'll have people coming to me and they'll I'll muscle test them for things and you would think that it wouldn't be good for them but their body says oh yeah it's okay I, a guy that smoked 
or used to smoke and he quit for a long time. And he said, this tobacco, is, am I still sensitive tobacco? And I said, no, you're fine. But I think what happens after you get it out of your system for a long time, you can do it, maybe for a while, but anyway. So just know that you might test uh, negative on something and then be able to, to eat it later on. So it's always a possibility there. Um, and be ready to hear the truth when you ask. Because so many times I go, oh, I don't want that answer. I want another answer. That is not what I wanted to hear. That I can't eat that chocolate today, you know, whatever. So uh, just know that, but you've got to trust it. Because if you don't, the subconscious will not work for you. It just can't. It's like, well, I'm telling all this truth, but she doesn't want to hear it. And you always ask permission. You're going to muscle test someone. Not you don't have to worry about yourself. Always ask permission first. That's the key. Just remember that. Just say, okay, I need your permission to do this. And uh, when I've had parents come and they wanted me to muscle test their child, even if their child was not, not there, I could muscle test the child or the person by proxy as long as I had their permission. And they knew it would be okay for me to do that. So I can muscle test other people too. Everything that I'm sharing with you, you all can do. There is anything that I'm talking about that you can't. It just takes time to learn it if you want to. I'm going to tell you this is the most valuable skill that I've ever learned in my life because I know that I don't have to go anywhere outside of me to get the answers to anything I need to know. It's all within me, right in me, and I can ask, and I'm talking to my subconscious mind, but my subconscious mind is connected to universal mind, which knows everything. So that's why we're, we're wanting to learn this. And also, our mind, every time you talk to your mind, it'll say, oh yeah, smoke those cigarettes, drink that alcohol, you know, do those drugs, whatever, it doesn't care, it just wants that. But if you ask your body, your body cannot lie because your body is connected to your heart. It is a heart-body connection. That's why how muscle test works. Does that make sense to you? We've got this mind-body connection here. Okay. Okay, the bottom line is muscle testing is a compass. And yes or no? That's what you're asking. Yes, no. Yes, no. After a while, I got really, I thought, I had to figure out how to ask a question, just a specific question was just yes or no. I had to make sure that I was, um, you know, just yes or no questions. But sometimes you want to just say it and not have to figure out a certain question. I promise you, the more you practice this, you can say it any way you want to and you'll get your answer. 